Welcome, thanks for joining me, astrologer Patrick Arundel, for the latest of my deep dive videos. Today I'm going to explore the journey of Venus through the passionate fire sign of Aries, which begins on the 5th of April and goes on for 25 days through to the 29th. Now Venus is very much to do with our appreciation of good food, good wine, calorific goodies, our self-worth, our values and money through its rulership of Taurus, but through its rulership of Libra, the opposite sign of Aries, it's very much about how we relate, build partnerships, find points of commonality, develop cooperation and collaboration. And because of this, Venus in Aries is said to be detrimented. So let's take a look at what Venus in Aries will mean. Personally, I feel it brings a great deal of excitement. And also as it makes its way into this sign, it forges a fabulous link to Pluto. For the first time in over 220 years with Pluto in Aquarius and Venus in Aries. What's the symbolism of this? I'm also going to share with you the event chart and some more about what we can expect over this next three and a half weeks in terms of Venus's influence collectively. I'll then go through each of the 12 zodiac signs from Aries through to Pisces to give you a flavor of what you can expect in terms of your ascendant, your sun or the moon. If you're new to my channel, thank you so much for joining us. This is very much a community. If you have any thoughts, please share them. If you're a returning visitor, all your views, comments and support mean so much to me. If you've yet to subscribe to my channel, please click or tap on the bell notification symbol. Every time I drop a video, you should get an alert from YouTube. Also, I've been writing daily written horoscopes for near to 30 years. My work's featured the world over, and that includes one of Britain's most read newspapers. If you'd like to get your uh, version, email to your device each morning. Please click on the subscription link beneath this video. I also provide an overview of the dominating influence for each day to give uh, a slice of the big picture. Now, if you're a patron, you can download my Venus Factoid uh, through Patreon. If you've yet to become a patron, I'd be honored if you do. If you'd like to sign up and download the Venus leaflet and then cancel your subscription, well, that's up to you. But the Venus in-depth booklet is available through Patreon. And thank you so much for your ongoing support. If you'd like to have a one-to-one -one consultation with me, I do these mainly through Zoom these days, but Skype is available if that's your preference. And in those sessions, I don't just look at the transits and your natal horoscope, I'm also looking at your progress chart, your directed chart, your solar return. I look at some key midpoints and give you a really exhaustive insight into what you can expect or to answer any uh, queries you may have. Please check out my testimonials by clicking on the link beneath this video. I don't modify these, they just come straight in and I put them on my website so they're absolutely totally authentic. So Venus in Aries, what would we expect if Venus was in Aries in a natal chart? Well to be honest it depends what house it's in. It also depends if it's forging a relationship to another key player. So for example, if Venus was very close to Mars in Aries, well that's a, a very intense influence, particularly if they're exceptionally close. So that person probably would be extremely ardent because of course Venus can be about desire, but it's the more delicate desire. It's more coquettish, whereas the ruler of the sign of Aries is about raw sexuality. And that of course is Mars. So as Venus glides into Aries, I think it's going to make us all much more aware of our identity because the first house, which is very Aries-like, or uh, the sign of Aries, is about our uh, way of being and presenting ourselves. And that's a very Libran Venus principle as well, very much to do with how we dress, how we speak, how we connect to people. 
So if you find yourself wanting to give yourself some kind of makeover, you could find yourself being a bit more daring over the next few weeks. Now Venus is said to be in detriment in Aries because of the opposition to the sign of Libra because Aries is about I and the sign of Libra is much more about we. But that doesn't mean to say that people with Venus and Aries won't have good relationships because I personally always enjoy reading for people with Venus and Aries because they have a, an energy of going for it whether it's around their personal aims, whether it's around their creative talents and artistry, whether it is about somebody they fancy, that first blush, that uh, thrill of the chase is something which is really exhilarating for them. So that makes that person uh, a person who is going to not sit on their hands because of course Venus in Libra can watch everything and uh, analyze and weigh everything up but then may be a little bit timid to take action so Venus in Aries particularly if someone had it in the first house would make someone very independent minded it could make them a little bit resistant to settling down maybe at times so single-minded in relationships or even business matters that some people may feel they're a bit selfish but they do create this buzz and so love at first sight is not unknown to people with Venus in Aries. And it may be something that we can all experience, some uh, thrill or, or excitement around uh, uh, someone we meet socially over the next 3.57 weeks. It could be an idea that we've got that's really creative and different, that really grips us and we're sharing it with a, a lot of vigour. Or it could be that there's a possession, which of course Venus Taurus can be about the more material world that we really desire and we feel that making a move for it is something that we're really going to appreciate. But if you do find yourself wanting to give yourself some kind of glamorous makeover, Venus and glamour very much entwined, why not? New haircut, new clothes, a new look, a new way of being. But this can also be uh, a transition which helps us all to appreciate beauty uh, because Venus rules that and good manners even with Venus in Aries still very important we can cultivate that's a very Venus word I think we can cultivate and build up by relating to people but we can still take the initiative which is Venus in Aries but if you are someone who likes to go and see art galleries shows, bands, uh, spend time in calf culture, this is going to be a busy and uplifting period. And don't underestimate the impact that your charm can have on those people you encounter. Now, on the screen now, I'm sharing the event chart. So this is the exact moment that Venus moves into Aries. And there is one very, very special influence. And that is a sextile to Pluto in the sign of Aquarius. You can also see from the chart wheel on the screen that the moon's in Aquarius as well. And Pluto moved into Aquarius on the 21st of January, but links to Venus in this sextile between these two signs for the first time in over 220 years. Now recently on the 10th of March, when Mercury moved into Aries, that too had a sextile to Pluto. So what we're being asked to do in some ways is re-engineer our thinking in terms of how we connect to one another, our network, but also our future hopes, all Pluto. Pluto in Aquarius is also pushing into the open a lot more revelations around people's uh, use of power in an inappropriate way. People who have Pluto, Venus, sextile or trine or conjunct in a natal chart, if someone is interested in them, they're going to be checking out whether that person's going to be all in. If that person wants to play a little bit and be free and easy, that's probably not going to be so attractive. What about if it's a square or an opposition? Well, that means there can be a lot of leverage when it comes to people getting what they want but the disguise of Pluto because Pluto can hide power 
and the charm of Venus means that people can be very seductive in their approach to us because they want us to have a job or take a contract but there's probably more in it for them than us. The other thing could be when someone love bombs us because they're really attracted to us but really what they want is sex. So that's something else to be mindful of but in this particular relationship I think it's a wonderful opportunity for all of us to rethink our connections. I feel that what we're seeing in terms of people's identities is a lot more fluidness. And obviously, uh, if people are of a more conservative uh, uh, instinct, that can feel challenging. But equally, a lot of these energies have been there out of sight for years anyway. So all that Pluto's doing is pushing things into the open more and more and people are wanting to be more authentic very Aquarius and in a way very Aries so if there is somebody that you're drawn to and it may be a different type of relationship so we're seeing the whole concept of thruples for example uh, coming into the news a lot more especially amongst young young people People also have much more fluid identities in terms of their sexual preferences when they're younger. So things are less uh, uh, nailed down into very strict parameters. As I say, for some people that's more challenging, for other people it's a stroke. You know, everyone's entitled to leave their life as they wish. We do need to be mindful of the planets, or in the case of Libra, the influences in the two zodiac signs that are ruled by Venus. So the south node is in the seventh house. Remember that's the habitual behavior. So if we tended to be a bit too much of a giver around relationships, Venus can bolster us to defend our individuality better. But that's a theme at the moment. Of course, with the sun uh, having just passed over the north node yesterday in terms of the true node again that's very much about realizing our appreciation of our individuality but also asserting our agency but the other thing of course is that we've got two two planets jupiter and uranus in the sign of taurus and uranus is the co-regent but modern higher octave ruler of the sign of aquarius so there's some linkage there but that's saying, I feel, about desire, that if you want something, Uranus can make things happen quickly. Jupiter's not about boundaries, certainly in terms of its rulership of Pisces, and it's very much about going for it in its rulership of Sagittarius. So I feel that we're in for a bit of rock and roll, but what about the other influences that are coming up beyond that amazing link between Venus and Pluto, which means if we do connect with someone now, and it really feels meaningful. It could be a relationship that really sticks around because, of course, Pluto is in a fixed sign of Aquarius along with the Moon. But the upcoming aspects, we have Venus in a conjunction with the North Node, and this happens between the 15th and the 20th, and that becomes exact on the 17th of April. If we do encounter someone where our instincts tell us that something feels sweet, go with it. Venus also combines with Mercury, the retreat in Mercury, in a glorious way from the 17th to the 21st. This can be very flirty. So if there is someone that you like or there's someone you want to impress with a business idea or a creative project, your powers of communication are very important. Mercury may be retrograde, but that gives us a chance to rethink and reset or uh, reassess a situation around a relationship and if a relationship is proving too uh, enclosing and stealing away our ability to feel free and you don't have that I don't feel even in the most devoted relationships if you just feel really comfortable with one another but I feel that Venus conjunct Mercury could see some people have conversations about how uh, communication is shared backwards and forwards but then Venus is also in a conjunction with Chiron from the 17th to the 24th exact on the 21st so all those influences are very clustered together so you can see that Venus is going to have quite the dazzling influence 
but particularly when it's going through its second decan. Now let's think about the second decan because the first decan is ruled by Mars, the second decan of the Sun. So if there is somebody that you're really drawn to and you know, you're finding it very difficult not to think about them, the Sun is asking you to convey your affection with maximum animation because you can radiate that warmth in such a beautiful way. But if there is, conversely, a relationship which is not quite working for you, you may need to think about that again. And if you're an artistic or creative person, try to be as proactive as possible over this next three and a half weeks, because it's a really a great time to inject an ongoing strand with more energy and vitality, or if there's something you want to get off the ground, really uh, make sure that your communication with others is pulling them to you in a very attentive way. Please stay with me as I go through each of the 12 zodiac signs from Aries through to Pisces. But if you would like to ascend above this zodiac forecast, if you give me three pieces of personal birth data, of time, date and place of birth, I'll prepare for you your life roadmap report. This will give you stunning insights into the patterns that have played out in your life so far, but help you to have a much more intimate understanding of how to work with these going forwards. Also, in my special package of 30% off, you can get your 12 month transits, the moving planets in the sky, interacting with your unique blueprint. And if you've had that version of my offer before, or you've had your natal chart produced before, why not check out my Draconic package? This is your soul chart, very karmic, based on the nodes, moving the north node to nought degree Aries, the vernal point. And it does give a very different perspective. And it's really about what we brought into the world when we arrived. Check out that below too. So Aries, it very much depends on your unique situation in terms of relationships and romance. In terms of money, that I feel could be more of a collective thing. But if someone has disappointed you in recent years, but particularly over the last year, whether you're with that person now or not, part of the reason you become more conscious of it has been the role of Neptune first and then Saturn over the last year in your 12th house. But that, in a way, that combination has been pushing you, along with your ruler Mars at the present time, to be philosophical about what didn't work out and try to let it go, try to rinse it away from you because Venus moving into your sign is a great time to draw a line in the proverbial celestial sand, move into the moment. So if there has been a breakdown, a separation, a disappointment, and that person isn't in your life anymore, it's probably best to stop fretting about them and reminiscing and become much more conscious of what makes you so special because you can really dazzle people over the next few weeks. There's such a lot of energy in your sign. It's such a unique moment for all Aries people. So whether it comes to the way you dress, the way you uh, take exercise, because your sign is very much about action. If you want to lose a little bit of weight, get a bit more trim for the beach. All those things, if you're in the Northern Hemisphere, there's a lot to support you in this process. And unfortunately, if someone has let you down or there's been a lack of sincerity around any relationship, whether it's with a colleague, a friend, um, a family member, just remember what you're about. You're about someone who does take a firm grip on your life tiller. And when you don't do that because you get caught up in waiting for someone to present to you, that in a way is seeing you giving away your power. However, if you are in a relationship which hasn't ended but isn't perfect, there could be part of you that feels a bit resentful that it always seems to fall to you to have to re-spark things or reimagine things if the other person tends to be a bit passive. And that is very, very hard. I agree with that. But there's still enough around this chart, particularly with Pluto in the mix, to push you to work on your thinking, Mercury in your sign, in a retrograde. There may be some rethinking going on. 
and Venus's link to Pluto is suggesting think long term. If you feel that essentially you don't want to separate from the person you're with, then it's definitely worth persisting with, but it could be that you may need to be the person who does take that lead. Now, when it comes to your creative interests, your social world, I think you're going to be coming much more into form. It will be, as I've said before, when Mars moves into your sign at the very end of April that you really find that ignition point to really power forwards. So there is a, a little bit of a duo of energies at the moment between the Pisces stuff and the airy stuff, but there's a lot here for you to go and dazzle. Taurus, with Venus being your ruler, you have a, a special appreciation of her magic. But moving into the 12th house, where of course you do have the part of fortune, the node, the north node, the sun, and also Chiron and Mercury in retrograde, does suggest that you could go through a period of quite deep reflection around what you want in terms of your relationships, but also about how you're going to go forwards uh, around money and earning a living because Venus is about that everyday money. So whatever your situation, you may find yourself being much more inclined to take a little bit of a, a break from being quite so socially active. Also with Saturn in your 11th house, pretty close to Mars, if there is somebody uh, in your friendship circle or a group of people that tend to be a little bit frustrating at times, maybe just finding your own space, particularly with Jupiter and Uranus tightening up in their conjunction, which will become exact on the 21st in your sign. And really right to, to when the sun moves into Taurus on the 19th. It's not that I feel that you're going to be necessarily and social or unfriendly, but just very protected. And I feel that the people who will you will allow through into your inner world probably are those people that you have a high sense of trust and respect for. But because Pluto is right at the top of your chart on your 10th house cusp, if you have been thinking a lot, particularly since the third week of January about what you're doing for a living, that thinking could reach a new level of intensity. But if someone has disappointed you, or you feel someone's not being very sincere or loyal to you, that may be a person that's set to make way over this next three and a half weeks. But as I mentioned before, it doesn't necessarily have to be in a romantic context. It could be just where you feel in general, there hasn't been enough simpatico and awareness to your recent situation. Gemini, Venus moving into this part of your situation is absolutely fabulous. But of course you do have your ruler Mercury in the 11th house too, in retrograde. So there is a, a tension between those two energies that does come together, as I mentioned before, from the 17th through to the 21st. But the opportunity is also to be relating to people that are very attractive and pleasant to be around. The energy flows nicely and perhaps the Mercury retrograde will come out in terms of refocusing your long-term aims or maybe there will be some people you have uh, affiliated with or associated with that are going to make way a little bit. So some kind of refreshment around your interests, your social group, your friendships and if there is somebody that you're strongly drawn to in uh, one of those groups there could be enough electricity going on uh, to draw you even closer together. Now, often when you read about uh, friends with benefits or if you get involved with a friend, what happens if the relationship doesn't work out, you might lose a friend. Well, those are obviously things to consider. You can, of course, be someone with a very quick moving uh, uh, and very inquisitive nature. So maybe Pluto up there in your ninth house is asking you to align with people who really share your philosophies. But you could connect uh, with someone through travel, you could connect through going to a movie or uh, somewhere like a library, um, because 
the ninth house energy of Pluto is feeding into the 11th house, more connecting energy of Venus. So quite a fascinating time. If you're in a relationship and you're not completely convinced about that relationship, well, it's certainly, particularly if it's a professional relationship with Saturn and Mars so close together in your 10th house, maybe you do need to keep your options open a little bit. Um, keep those job applications going out. Uh, but who you know, as I've mentioned recently, as much as what you know, is going to be a major factor through to the 19th of this month. But your ability to get on with lots of different types of people is definitely a huge asset at this time. So Cancer, your role in life is really under the astral spotlight at the moment. The combination of Mars and Saturn in your ninth house suggests that information might not be coming through to you quite as quickly as you would like in order to make the decisions you need to make. What you can do with Venus climbing right to the 10th house cusp of your chart is use your natural skills as a relator, which comes from your ruler, the moon, because you have a capacity to listen and intuit and download the atmosphere of situations that some people don't have as acutely as you do. So Venus moving here means that whether you're discussing things in your local community of a voluntary nature or uh, where you would or are supporting um, children in your family, your people skills are really critical there. Or if it is around attending interviews or doing presentations, the words you use, the tone you use, the way you come across can have a huge impact over the next three and a half weeks. It's a, a great time to elevate what makes you special, but by using a degree of subtlety. Now with Mercury in the retrograde, and of course they're coming together from the 17th to the 21st, ironically, it is possible that a conversation you have could mean that you're revisiting something and you're meeting someone for the second time. But actually, I think on both sides, there may be a different reaction. There may be a familiarization that was lacking the time before. So don't see Mercury retrograde as being certain to put a spanner in the proverbial works. And there's enough going on for you at the moment for you to cultivate or present yourself in a way that it will maximize people's respect uh, and admiration for you. But of course, we can't demand that from people, but that's where the subtlety and the skillfulness that Venus can provide to you can be such a great help over the next three weeks. Now, when it comes to your personal situation, if there is someone that you've been seeing that you really, really like, and you're wanting to take it to that next level of commitment, for example, introducing someone to a family member, or perhaps uh, moving in together, or even more, planning uh, 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 a wedding, then Venus moving into this area is a very good portent indeed. Um, but equally, if you are someone who tends to be a little bit ambitious and a bit selective about who you will get involved with, it's important not to judge someone you may encounter over the next 25 days just based on what they do for a living and whether they've uh, got a professional qualification that you feels good enough for you. Because in a way you could miss out on an opportunity uh, by just being aware that Pluto is saying search out deeper information before making binding decisions. So Leo, Venus moving into this area obviously tunes into the fire element that your uh, sign shares. And you can see when Venus makes those series of influences, very potent in terms of the decan that's governed by your sign in the main. But the big takeout is at the very beginning of this process with Pluto in your seventh house, linking with Venus in the ninth. What the takeout from that is that you really need to feel that your relationships are meaningful. If you are attending college or you're uh, traveling or you're going to some kind of uh, join up with a shared interest, perhaps to do with history or spirituality or even astrology, that could be where you have a brilliant connection with someone. 
And of course, with Mercury retrograde in this part of your situation, there may be some rethinking going on, but equally some uh, niggles and some glitches. Venus just suggests that if you really want to find out the truth of any kind of involvement and it's linked to Pluto, you do need to look beneath the surface. In an ongoing relationship, because Mars, the planet of drive and desire, is very close to Saturn in your eighth house, if intimacy has been a, a problem or the person that you've been drawn to doesn't have a, a great approach to resources as you see it, you know, they're not, they don't really share your values around money or uh, tend to be a bit mean or tight. Um, that all can be sort of red flags for you, to be honest. And you might be thinking about, is this time to break free, be more independent, have a time of just really going with the flow. So if a relationship isn't really working for you and you feel someone's very limiting of you or controlling, to be honest, then you may be in the mood to have a, a period of personal freedom and that can actually be very restorative to you. Most of all, you need stimulation in your contacts. So if you do start talking to someone new or fresh, comes from a different background, could be linked to someone from overseas, that actually can be extremely enlivening to you. So. If anything has just felt a bit heavy and stuck recently, you need it to free up. If it's not going to free up through dialogue and discussion and mutual understanding, you may want to have that uh, time of, of personal freedom. But if you are already free, uh, the more that you can experiment and be a bit more adventurous over the next few weeks, and that could be in your approach to uh, investment, uh, business, the more that could be really exciting for you. Virgo, Venus has moved into your eighth house. It could be you're going to have some good news quite imminently to do with finance, but it may not necessarily be yours. So for example, a partner or someone in your family uh, may have some uplift around that area and be generous to you in the process, which is very nice. Then again, you may find by getting your pensions analyzed that they, they are in better shape than you thought. That could be true of a property valuation. Uh, or maybe you're going to discover that someone's made some kind of allowance for you, perhaps in a future situation to do with a legacy, which although may not give you an immediate payout, it's actually really nice to feel that you are being thought of in that way. But Venus in the eighth house, putting it bluntly, can be about sex. But you have uh, Mars, the planet of sex, in your seventh house of relating, very close to Saturn. So if you're not really getting the mood music, you know, if there's not much collaboration, not much celebration of the things you share, it is more just based on, well, are we going to basically get intimate? That in itself, particularly with your ruler in retrograde, could be a bit of a turn off at this time. But with Saturn in the seventh house, there's always the opposite uh, potential it could be a time when you get even more invested in someone if it feels right. But the eighth house is about transformation. So something can transform around your finances, around a close relationship, but it needs to really work in terms of the flow of communication, despite Mercury's retrograde. Libra, Venus moving into your opposite sign is a really lovely development. And that link with Pluto, terrific. Because Pluto's in your fifth house, that's where we showcase our warmth, affection. It can be where we set our intentions in terms of our desires. And the connection with Venus is critical because Venus is lighter and fluffier and more charming and coquettish, but Pluto done half mean business. So if there's someone you encounter now and you really hit it off, it could be absolutely fantastic. Mercury in retrograde in this sector in an existing relationship suggests that it's important to keep the lines of communication open. Even if we've known each other a long time, one of the challenges can be that certain patterns develop in relationships which are very hard to recalibrate once they're in place. And yet someone else can bring out a different energy within us or we bring out a different energy in others. The great news, however, is that Mercury 
despite its retrograde, is in a perfect link with the Moon, just like Venus is with Pluto. Venus being your ruler uh, gives you a, a great deal of skill in terms of relating to other people. Your listening uh, abilities uh, can be highlighted, but with Mercury switching backwards, it is important, as I mentioned, to keep working at it. If you're single and you'd like to meet someone, it wouldn't be a complete surprise. It was in the most very mundane of circumstances, mainly because of Mars and Saturn being in the sixth house. So in other words, it could be for your work or somewhere municipal, um, somewhere that people congregate uh, to get their needs met. For example, the supermarket, um, a pharmacy, uh, somewhere like that, a petrol station, and there could be that sudden connection. But if you have that sudden connection, Right at the start of this three and a half week period, it can be incredibly powerful and exciting. It's also worth saying that Pluto can be about rejuvenation. It's not just about the things that won't work, where power is used in an inappropriate way. It can be about where we reincarnate. So if your relationship isn't quite going as you want, despite those set patterns, Think about how you could read information, watch videos, get some ideas about how you can bring back that spark to the Alliance. Scorpio, your traditional ruler of, of Mars, is being stifled at the moment by Saturn in your fifth house, which is about romance. So if we think about Venus being the planet of relating, as well as money, the sixth house suggests that you may need to be a little bit more sacrificing over the next few weeks if a relationship has stumbled a little bit. With Pluto in your fourth house, angling to Venus, if you do more on the domestic front, for example, it's likely to be very much appreciated by a partner. If you aren't in a relationship at the moment, and of course with Mercury retrograde in your sector of work and where you provide support and services to others, which is Aries, Venus moving into this uh, area suggests that could be where you have a connection. Really, really exciting. And if you are feeling that opportunities aren't really breaking for you at the moment, don't forget that incredibly positive link between Jupiter and Uranus, which peaks on the 21st in your sector of relating, but that is going to forge an amazing link to Mars in your sector of romance. So a lot to look forward to later this month, but at the moment, I feel that this is a set of influences which points towards perhaps getting down to the gym, getting a bit fitter, being a bit more sacrificing if you're in a relationship. And um, if you're not quite sure of where your relationship situation is heading, know there's some really sparkling stuff coming later this month. Sagittarius, Venus moving into House 5 is about as good as it gets after House 7. House five is where we radiate our affection. Very, very warm. Forging that link to Pluto, you could find just the right choice of words. If you do encounter someone or go on a date, it could be a very powerful experience, perhaps in an existing relationship. There's been a lot of worry about more emotional or family or home-based issues, and those can still be around. I think this set of influences is saying, look, get out and play together, be more sociable. Try to bring a greater sense of lightness and stimulation to your situation. When it comes to finances, Venus in the fifth house is saying to you get creative. If you have got talents that are not being fully deployed, think about how you may revisit that. Mercury in a retrograde could be a good thing, especially when it comes into the conjunction from the 17th to the 21st. That could be a, a day or a series of days when a conversation really sparks off something truly magical for you. Capricorn Venus moving into the fourth house is, is absolutely lovely if you're someone with a, a real tasteful appreciation of your environment. So you may be getting the paintbrushes and the colour charts out and redecorating, or you may move the furniture around, uh, change some of the fabrics that you're using, that's all very much to do with your immediate environment, the fourth house where Venus has moved into. But the fourth house is also where we relate Venus, our emotions. 
Mercury in retrograde is not strong in the fourth house, particularly in retrograde. As I mentioned recently, it tends to see ideas go around our minds, but we find it more difficult to output them. Here Venus can give you a voice, a gentle voice, because there is quite a harsh link between your ruler Saturn and Mars. And maybe um, as Mars reaches to connect with, with Saturn, which is going to be a, a big influence this uh, month, that could see something slow down and you could feel somewhat frustrated. So through the next few weeks, it's important to try and stay in touch with your emotional uh, reactions and not become defensive. You know, if something has jarred or hasn't quite felt right, keep the door open, keep the flow of dialogue going backwards and forwards. The more you can really express your deeper feelings, the more comfortable you're going to become in your own skin. Maybe part of the process with all these energies and areas is almost like reconfiguring your approach. You know, if you have been someone who's been brought up in a way that you're very responsible and hardworking and reliable and tenacious and committed, all very Capricornian energies, has that at some point denied you being more in touch with how you feel about things. Also because Pluto and the Moon are in your second house, that's about your values and linking to Venus in your fourth house. Security and stability around finances and emotions are strongly linked at this time. But if you are a little bit of a shy person or a bit reticent to open up about your vulnerabilities, I think Venus in a way is saying, look, you can't do it necessarily with everyone. You have to choose the right person. But if there are some people that you feel that it is uh, worth being a little bit more progressive in terms of sharing who your inner world is really about, that's a, an experiment that I feel is worth having because it could draw you so much closer together. Aquarius, someone is going to be hanging on your every word. And it could be over the next six months with that solar eclipse coming, because of course that links with Chiron in your third house. But having Pluto just at the start of Aquarius linking with Venus in this way for the first time in such a long time, 220 years, not even I remember that. And when I came along, there were galleons on the wild sea. But seriously, Pluto is saying, look, at times in your life, you've probably experienced like I have, that being an Aquarius doesn't necessarily mean that people get you because sometimes you are running a little bit ahead of where people are. But now, suddenly your ideas, Venus in the third house, can become in vogue. Also, you can compel or persuade people, Venus and Pluto, in a very powerful way. The moon in Aquarius linking to Mercury despite its retrograde, so you could showcase your ideas fabulously well. Now, if you are wanting to get to know somebody new, it could be through social media, it could be through an app with Venus in the third, but it could be someone who lives locally that you encounter on a pretty frequent basis. The best way to get to know people is just get the dialogue going. But whatever your situation, I think Venus moving into the third house is a, is a very lovely possibility for you. And certainly with Venus in Aries, if you do feel that you need to take the initiative, why not? Um, you're in or coming into a phase when you will sparkle a lot more. Just don't let Mars and Saturn in your second house affect your sense of self-worth to the point that you're not then flowing with the uniqueness of who you really are. So Pisces, I couldn't wait to tell you about this because I know that Venus has exalted, ascended in your sign. And it has and is still very close to your uh, ruler of Neptune. But Venus moving into Aries is good for your finances. You're going to find over this next three and a half weeks that there can be some uplift. Now, of course, you do still have the grisly Saturn in your sign and the confusing and draining Neptune with you as well. So it's probably not going to be a complete walk in the park, but if you're wanting to get firmer foundations going in your world, Venus moving into the second house, it's pretty reliable in terms of 
uh, triggering some kind of uplift. Mercury in retrograde suggests if someone owes you money, you need to keep at it and be persistent in getting that in. What about the romance of Venus in the second house? Well, maybe you've been dazzling more than you realise recently because the enchanting link between Venus and Neptune is one of the best in astrology for seduction, but actually in a very spiritual way. Venus moving into the second house means that if there has been a connection, you may now want to go to point Earth, which means enjoying good food or good wine, or something a little more sensual. So, interesting time for you. Depends, of course, what, what's going on in your situation. But if you would like to get to meet somebody new, at the moment, your chart, when this event occurs, is influenced strongly by Saturn's combination with Mars. So you might not have quite the vitality you would like, but I feel go into a pottery class, very Taurus. Um, maybe uh, an interest group, say to do with learning a new skill. So we've got Uranus and Jupiter. Jupiter can be knowledge, and Uranus can be electricity. It could be something to do with the healing arts, that you have a connection with someone and it can be an earthy but exciting connection almost straight away. So a lot of potential there, uh, Pisces, for you to enjoy the more sensual side of relating or the pleasures of spending money or enjoying creature comforts, even if it's some locally grown veg from your market. Those type of things can be essentially pleasing as splashing out a load of money. It's been a real pleasure being with you. Thank you so much for joining me. If you've yet to subscribe to my channel, please do click or tap that bell notification symbol. Have a great time with Venus through Aries.